go to the county fair. And every year they walk by the helicopter ride, and Ethel says, oh, Henry, can we please go for a helicopter ride? And Henry says, Ethel, it costs $50. We're not spending $50 on a helicopter ride. So they walk away. And the next year, they walk by the helicopter ride, and Ethel says, oh, Henry, can we please go for a helicopter ride? It's only $50, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime. And Henry says, Ethel, we are not spending $50 on a helicopter ride. And they walk away. So the next year, they're at the county fair, and they walk by the helicopter ride. And the pilot, who's listened to this every year, he feels so sorry for Ethel. And so finally he says, she, and they're there, and, and he, she says, oh, Henry, can we please go for a helicopter ride? And Henry said, Ethel, we're not spending $50 on a helicopter ride. The pilot said, look, I have a deal for you. I'll take you both for a ride and you won't pay a thing on one condition. You cannot make a peep, cannot say a word, not make a sound. And that was fine with Henry because he didn't really like to talk anyway. So they both got in the helicopter and they took off. And the pilot takes them for a real ride. They swerve, swerve, and they swoop, and, and it's up and down, and it's the wildest ride he's ever taken anybody on. Not a sound. They don't make a peep. So they finally land, and the pilot says, well, your ride's free. You didn't make a peep. And Henry said, well, you know, I almost said something when Ethel fell out. <laughs> so, so my question is, was Henry more attached to the money or to Ethel? And I'm going with the money. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about attachment. And everybody's been asking me about the paper clips. We're talking about attachment. And in unity, that's a kind of a no-no. You know, it's like, don't be attached. Don't be attached. Well, actually, there's two kinds of attachment. And there's love-based attachment, which, which brings us joy. And we feel gratitude for these people and these things and these events, and we're attached to them. I'm very attached to Bruce pretty much most of the time, you know, 37 years this month. So, but I'm, I don't fear our relationship. I'm very attached to good coffee. I learned that when we spent a week in Washington and there wasn't a decent cup of coffee in the entire city. I'm very attached to that. I love it and I appreciate it. And I'm very attached to my favorite jeans. So these are good things, but they bring me joy and I dwell in gratitude for them. But there's other things that we form attachments to. We form some unhealthy attachments to people, to places, to things. We form horribly unhealthy attachments to power and control and fear. Some of our attachments are just to the way things were. I don't know about it your your house, but at mine on Thanksgiving, the dressing can only be made one way, and it must be in little balls. There's no other way. And don't even ask Bruce if it's an option because it's not. I don't care. I don't like dressing, but it, he has to have dressing. I call them wads. So we look at things and say, we can't change this. We just can't change. And as a congregation, we're going through a lot of changes. And, you know, I have to say, we, we love our attachment to our church. And every once in a while, some fear creeps in. And there comes in the issues. So if our fear relationships are based on our, our fear of losing or not having, then they cause us problems. And sometimes they become addictions. Now, I'm not talking about the the chemical kind. I'm talking about we're addicted to people. We're addicted to things that happen and we form, people have abandonment issues and they become obsessed and just things just are not healthy. And we become uh, obsessed with the fear of lack. There's not enough money to go around. Well, of course there is. Have you seen how much wealth has been created in the last, you know, 10 years? There is no, no limit. 
and I need my stuff. I become attached to my stuff. If I don't have my stuff, you know, what will I do? And from there, we some people move into hoarding, and it becomes a real issue. Some people become attached to power. We see tyrants and bullies and dictators of all kinds, and it's they're so attached to the power and the fear of being powerless. Some people are attached to what they believe that must be true. You know, we see religions that say, we're right and everybody else is wrong. And the fear isn't that everyone's not like them. The fear is that they're wrong. Because what if everybody is right in their path to God? So here's the deal. People, people leave us. Bodies don't last, whether it's our uh, human bodies or our animal bodies. People, they leave. And we, there's, you know, for good or in unpleasant um, ways, but they just leave. And we're very sad. And sometimes we grieve and it gets, goes beyond grief because we cannot let go, let go of the attachment. We can hold on to the love and the joy and the memories, but we hang on to the other stuff. And our stuff goes away. We've seen the fires in California, the floods, the tsunamis. Stuff goes away. We love our stuff, and that's okay. If we appreciate it, that's good. So when I'm thinking about attachment, this is my favorite affirmation. Because when we're healthy, when we're living in love-based attachments, we're healthy and we're at peace. So you probably remember David. He's credited with writing the 23rd Psalms, all the Psalms. And this is my favorite. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Period. Well, I change it. My version is, creator is my source, I do not lack. And lack is a state of want. So I'm always saying, do not, or as a state of lack, do not use the word want. I don't care if you're saying, I want an ice cream cone, because you're telling the universe, I lack an ice cream cone. So what the, this is the metaphysical meaning of uh, the Lord in the psalm. The Lord is the activity of the spiritual I am as ruling the consciousness. God or creator is the only force active in my life. So that's why I hold on to that. To me, that, that's my all-day affirmation. The creator is my source. I do not lack. So desires, they're heartfelt. There's no fear involved in a desire. And it, it's semantics, but it works. So please, if I hear you saying, I want, I will probably gently punch you. So this is what uh, Charles Fillmore said about David. Of course, we know he was the shepherd, and he killed Goliath, and he did all these things. Fillmore says that David rep represents divine love individualized in human consciousness. In his youth, he closely reflected divine love and a close communion with God. And he goes on to say that as king in dominion over men, his human character developed, and he manifested limitation of the human in larger degree. So basically, David got totally attached to lust, of course, we know that he went after Bathsheba and had Uriah killed, her husband. He was totally attached to power and greed. It really got the best of him. So God was no longer his shepherd. And I, we studied the Old Testament, and you know David was quite, we didn't talk a lot about him, but David's quite a character. But he has the same, had the same attachment issues that we go through moment by moment by moment every day. So this is, uh, some of you are familiar with Greg Braden, and he's a fabulous writer and, and teacher and spiritual guru. And he says, we live our lives based on what we believe about our world, our capabilities, and our limits. So what if those beliefs are wrong? Now that's very scary. So those of us here in Unity, we knew something was wrong 
with what we were taught as children. There, God is not a vengeful, mean old man sitting on a cloud somewhere. We just knew in our innermost being that was not the truth. So what else were we told? Well, the earth isn't flat. Asbestos is not a good building material. And cigarettes are not good for your health. So we're told all these things. So sometimes we have scientific advances that challenge and, and correct them. So spiritually, this is what Myrtle Fillmore said. I, when she got a diagnosis of, of terminal tuberculosis, she said, I am a child of the divine and I do not inherit disease. Well, go Myrtle. And Charles went on to, to challenge all the fear-based religions and the traditions and the dogma of the Western churches. He knew that he was in communion with the most holy. He didn't have to go through some other man to become one with that presence. So basically what we know is belief is what we think and feel in our hearts. So what do you think is true? So what do you worry about? And this week we've all had a lot to worry about. If you saw the weather and the things going on at the earth and the tsunamis, we could, we could put a lot of energy into that. So worry is fear-based emotion that fixates our energy on a negative what if. Now think about that. If you spend your energy worrying about stuff, then all you're doing is putting your energy into whatever that situation is. So these are the things we have to, to worry about this week. We have to worry about terrorists. We have to worry about pollution. We have to worry about mass shootings. And of course money. We know there's not enough money. We have to worry about identity theft. We have to worry about global warming and climate change. And asteroids, do not forget asteroids, they're out there. And we have to worry about people who don't look like us. So where have you put your energy this week? And it may have only been for 30 seconds, but we get caught up in that icky. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this, and I've paraphrased. The birds don't worry about food or drink or clothes. The Creator takes care of them. Are we not worth more than the birds? Huh. And he went on to say, The flowers don't work or make clothes, and they're very well adorned, better than King Solomon. What little faith we have. <clears throat> don't worry about tomorrow. And so keep thinking, Annie, the sun will come up tomorrow. We, you know, and of course now I hear somebody add, Oh, we hope. We hope. And if you want to talk about hope, Check with Reverend Val. She has a really great philosophy on hope. So, what are you worrying about? Are you anxious? So, I, I've started thinking about anxiety and all the, the stuff that we're um, exposed to. And I looked up, and this I thought was astounding and horrible. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States affecting 40 million adults age 18 or over. 18.1% of the population. But it gets worse. Anxiety disorders affect 21.5% of children between 13 and 18 years old. When did this start? Oh, we had to worry about most of us, and I'm, you know, aging myself. All we had to worry about was getting under our desk when the nuclear bomb came or going out in the hall when the tornado was coming. We didn't have to worry about all this stuff. So my advice is stop listening to the Internet and the news and just look at the night sky. So back to what do you believe is true? Do you dwell in possibility or do you send 
prayers of peace and joy and gratitude instead. It's a lot more fun to be in joy and peace and gratitude. So what do you believe about your divine inheritance? And we talk about what is mine to have. So this is what Greg says in his book, Spontaneous Healing of Belief. Scientists have shown that it's impossible to simply watch anything. Our beliefs and expectations, conscious or subconscious, become part of what we're watching. We live in an interactive reality where we change the world around us by changing what happens inside us while we're watching. And we change with our thoughts and our feelings and our beliefs. From healing disease to the length of our lives to the success of our careers and relationships, everything we experience as life is directly related to what we believe to be true. So this is me. This is what I say. I hold on to what I believe to be true. Infinite possibilities of good, love, perfect health, peace, abundance, and joy. And I let go or eliminate all the other stuff that blocks my highest good. Do you believe that? Could I have an amen? amen. Thank you. So, and Greg says, in this malleable world where everything from atoms to cells is changing to match our beliefs, we're limited only by the way we think of ourselves in that world. And if I, you hear nothing else I say, hear this. We are never more than a belief, a belief away from our greatest love, our deepest healing, and our most profound miracles. It's a pretty strong statement. But here's the, the caveat. You must release the fear-based attachment because they're block the infinite possibilities. So my question to you, will you release and let them go? Thank you. And you can't do it just one time. You have to do it moment by moment by moment because, trust me, the phone will ring, somebody will turn on the news, or somebody's going to call and say blah, 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 and pull you right back, and we have to go back. It is moment by moment. It's a huge, huge commitment, and but we have to make it. So today, you have some metaphors for these attachments, and people have been asking me, what are these paper clips for? So the paper clips are simply tools to remind us what's important. We paper clip things together we need to keep. They're important, they have good information or whatever. But here's the deal. They come apart when they need to. We don't rip things apart with paper clips. They come apart gently and easily. And if we need to, we can put them right back together again. So please take your Paper clips today, they're on your bulletins. And thank you, Bruce, for everybody got at least two, bull two paper clips. Take them home. And this week, when you find yourself <coughs> going for the Gorilla Glue, which was the other option, choose the paper clip. Think about Gorilla Glue. It works great if you need to put furniture back together, but it's a, not a great attachment for our spiritual behavior. So gorilla, and I call it cosmic gorilla glue. It affirms and attaches our fears, our beliefs in lack, and our resentments. And it holds them tight. And you know what? If you go to pull it apart, you tear up. You rip, you ruin. You literally ruin whatever you were trying to keep. So I prefer, please release your, your cosmic gorilla glue. Use the paper clips and appreciate. Live, in, live the affirmation and affection for those things that are in our highest good. The wonderful relationships, our abundance, our health, everything that serves our highest good. And just let the other stuff go. Because you know what? When we let it go, we're just making room for something even better. And I call this the uh, no muss, no fuss approach because you will not 
make a mess. So here's my final words, my affirmations. My attachments are love-based and call forth my highest good. Do you believe that? Will you affirm it with me? My attachments are love-based and call forth my highest good. And all week, when all the icky stuff shows up, my favorite affirmation, the creator is my source, I do not lack. Would you affirm that with me? The creator is my source, I do not lack. And so it is.